Akali is without a doubt the premier assassin in League of Legends. She's almost always strong regardless of the meta, since she has a ton of tools which let her outplay opponents to always come out ahead. Sadly though, this is what keeps so many players away from picking her up. They think it's too difficult to pop off on Akali unless you've got crazy mechanics. But worry not, that's not true at all. You can have success in this champion even with mediocre mechanics. Akali is actually really easy to pick up once you learn just a few things. And in this guide, we're going to cover everything you need to know to get started and dominating your games nearly instantly. We'll cover everything from the two most important concepts you need to know, every tip and trick in her kit, the laning phase, team fighting, and how to build her. Before we get into it, if you want to improve fast at League of Legends, then nothing's better than our brand new Master and Minutes product on our website, skillcap.com. We take the highest priority skills you need to learn to climb ranks fast, such as wave control, and then break it down into a step-by-step -step process of bite-sized one to two minute videos that are easy to understand. So while you wait for your next game to start, you can learn freezing, fast pushing, slow pushing, bouncing waves, the list goes on, all in just a few minutes to maximize your improvement rate. We're adding new courses every week. For example, this week we added one on mid lane macro. These courses have been getting five star ratings from all of our users raving at how helpful they are. Seems too good to be true? Well, so don't worry, we're backed by a rank up guarantee. If you don't significantly improve while actively using skill cap, then you get your money back, no questions asked. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description below and get the rank you've always wanted. All right, now let's get into the ultimate Akali guide. Like we mentioned, let's start with by far the two most important things you need to know to play Akali, which will instantly make you much better. The first is simply input buffering. Some of you may already do this instinctively, but if you don't, then listen up. In a lot of fights, Akali is all about spamming Q and passive auto procs over and over again. The thing is, to do this, you need to constantly weave in and out of range of your opponent. That's where buffering comes in. Whenever you press Q on a target, during your animation, you want to have already clicked away. This way Akali doesn't waste a single moment and immediately begins moving back. Then when you auto attack with your passive, during that animation you want to be spamming Q so that the ability comes out as soon as your auto is over. So it should look smooth like this. Q buffer back, passive auto, buffer Q, buffer backwards, and repeat. It sounds complicated, but in reality it's super easy to do, and most players instinctively do this anyway. Do it properly though, and you will immediately see how much smoother your gameplay becomes, and your DPS will skyrocket because of it. Now here comes the biggest tip of them all. You will realize that Akali is one of the easiest champions in the game to get kills on if you just learn her RE combo. So as many of you know, Akali's E is a literal nuke. The second part for some reason is where a huge chunk of her damage is. Problem is, landing it can be a bit inconsistent, especially when things get chaotic. Here's where the RE combo comes in. It makes it nearly impossible to miss your E. Best part, it's really easy to do. You just R, keep your cursor on your target, and spam your E while you're dashing to your team. Then, you absolutely murder them. The reason this is super important too is because new Bakali players take forever to deal damage when killing targets. The beauty of the RE combo is that it sets up a ton of bursts instantly with zero skill required. Not only do you guarantee that your E lands, but it immediately sets all your bursts up. Your passive is procced, so now you can E2, passive auto, Q into a massive R2 burst. It's why this was one of our two most important tips. It's so easy and consistent to pull off that you'll be using this combo for nearly every single one of your solo kills and your kill count will rise drastically. The final thing we should cover is that the combo won't really work if you try to use R when you're already too close to your targets. That's because you won't throw your E until you've flown way past your target. This combo works best when you R from further away. That way Akali shoots her E when she's on top of them, making it nearly impossible to miss. Great, with those two critical tips covered, let's break down some more tips to make your Akali much more consistent. Most of Akali's skill expression can often come from her E alone, so let's focus on optimizing it first. The immediate thing that any Akali player will notice is how frustrating it is that your E forces you to travel in a straight line towards your opponent. This can often make it really easy to interrupt and outplay, getting you killed. So what do you do? The first option you've got is the simplest outplay, which is to run in a straight line towards an opponent who has a skill shot like that. When running directly at someone, they'll usually think that you're an easy target to hit. This can potentially bait their critical spell. Then you E, dodge their ability, and while they're stuck in their spell's animation, it also guarantees that your E1 lands. Of course, it won't always be that simple to bait. You have a second option with your flash. When you use E2 and you're flying towards someone, you can actually dodge their spell by flashing on top of them for the damage. This is really useful versus a ton of champions like Lux, Ari, Morgana, etc. The final option is knowing that activating Zhanya's won't stop your E2's travel or damage. There's literally nothing your opponent can do to stop you from E2ing them if you've got a stasis cooldown available. Not only is it useful for avoiding CC, but remember your E2 does high burst, so being able to go in 
with it even when you're low is a really great tip to keep in mind for clutching some situations. The next thing in regard to your E is that you don't have to immediately jump in when you land it. Good Akali players will often wait before pressing their E2 to gather information or wait for cooldowns. Like in this fight for example, Akali lands E onto the enemy gangplank but doesn't immediately take it. Her immediate thought process should be to stall as long as possible, to buy time for her W to come back up. But by waiting, she also notices that Gangplank is moving away from his own teammates, which gives her an even better opportunity to jump in and finish him off. It's not just cooldowns that stalling is good for. You can wait for energy or even some health regen before committing. Here, Akali lands E on Echo and knows she has to tower dive for the kill, so she min-maxes her door and shield regen before taking E2. This way, she got barely enough health to survive the dive and live with literally 2 HP. In any case, the wait can be for basically anything. Sometimes you just want to get the cannon minion before you go in for the kill. Doesn't matter what it is, just don't feel like you have to immediately take your dash every single time. Another vital tip to keep in mind is that you can get two procs or passive with both parts of your E. This is way more relevant during the early game where you have much more limited damage. You should try to make an effort to not double tap your E in close fights. Instead, use E, auto, E2, and auto again to maximize your DPS. Finally, as a quick reminder, Akali's E2 has no max range. This means that you can even follow champions who use their global ultimates to get around the map. It doesn't happen often, but there is definitely a bit more value to picking Akali when there's a global on the enemy team, such as Shen or Twisted Fate. Now that we've got her E fully covered, let's break down her R. The biggest tip you need to keep in mind comes when using her R2. It actually has a fairly decent hitbox behind Akali. So you don't always have to dash through your opponent to execute them, but instead you can often dash away to safety while killing them at the same time. A ton of Akali's kills will be done with backward R's, so make sure you don't forget this. Next, remember that both your R1 and R2 travel a fixed distance. You can't shorten either in any way, so here's how you can play around it. For your R1, you can often use this to reposition to safety. Here, Akali is caught out by the enemy Amumu. As she sits in her shroud, she thinks about her options and decides to use her R through the gangplank, positioning her perfectly to retreat. The enemy Amumu gets upset that she's getting away and overchases, giving Akali a kill on her way out too. Not only can you kite away with it, but using R1 to get closer to your main kill target is perfect as well. Using your opponent's teammates to get to who you actually want to kill is something you'll do quite a bit. It's especially important in later team fights where the enemy carries hide behind their team. R through their front line and you'll have a much easier time accessing the squishy enemy carries. Now when it comes to R2, you also have to play around the set travel distance. The main way of doing this is usually walking backwards. So right at this moment if Akali keeps chasing, then when Vlad's pool runs out, using R2 would put her a bit deep into the enemy tower. It's a bit subtle, but pay attention. When she waits out his pool, she'll walk backward a bit and maintains this exact range. Now from this range, she can ult in any direction that Vlad runs towards and only be slightly in tower range. The final thing to note is that you could do some fancy stuff with R and flash, like this R1 flash combo to deal damage to another target, or you can flash during your R2 for the damage. It's nice to know these combos, but they're not really used too much. Finally, as far as your W goes, it's a stealth. Needless to say, it's pretty OP. Just putting it down will immediately give you value as it's really frustrating for your opponents to play against. As for what you can do with it, remember that you can take that time to reassess fights. Look at what cooldowns you have available, who is near you, where to move towards, etc. There's also the obvious mechanic you'll immediately start using where you can leave your E in your W. This is a great tool for when you want to go in and score a kill or just buy time, all the while having a reliable escape route. For some other applications though, remember that in lane it's a great tool for dropping minion aggro. Minions are a huge source of damage early on, so being able to trade into big waves as a Kali and not take any minion harass is a great tool you want to take advantage of. For our last W tip, you can actually channel your teleport while shrouded. This may potentially get you out of a sticky situation versus champions with no AoE CC. Although it's rare, it can definitely be a lifesaver. Okay, with all the most important tips you need to know out of the way, let's briefly cover what you should look out for during the laning phase. Keep in mind that Akali is one of the weakest level 1 champions in the game due to her Q's super high energy cost. Costing 130 means that you'd have to wait for 60 energy to cast a second Q, which is definitely not happening. All this means is that you're playing fairly passively from levels 1 to 3, but that's the general game plan for most assassins, so this isn't anything new. Keep in mind though that each point you put in your Q reduces the energy cost by a fair amount. This means that your biggest spikes in the laning phase will come at levels 4, 5, 7, and 9. 
basically every time you put a point in queue. That's because with each level, you'll be able to incorporate more and more queues with every trade. As for what your goals in lane are, most Akali players tend to go for an attrition based style early on. This is because of how good Akali is at using the combination of Doran Shield and Second Wind. Although you have no innate sustain, this combo is absurdly OP on Akali, and if it hasn't been nerfed, you'll be running it almost every single game. That's because Akali can force very short trades with their W basically whenever she wants, so what you'll be doing is slowly baiting your opponents into wasting their health and mana with every trade. Try to keep these trades fairly short early on. Remember, your goal is to slightly chunk them and to passively regenerate a ton of HP. By doing so, you'll eventually whittle someone down enough to either force them out of lane or kill them. Once you're level 6 though, here's what you want to do. Try to keep the wave closer to your side of the lane. Akali doesn't have a ton of immediate burst during the early levels. Generally, she wants to go for slightly longer all-ins. So, keeping the wave on your side of the lane gives you way more time to chase down and DPS your opponent before they can get to the safety of their tower. As far as team fighting goes, you have so much mobility that reaching enemy carries should be a breeze. You're playing an assassin, so killing squishy targets is your main goal in fights. Shocking, we know. There is one extra thing we want to cover though. Do not underestimate the value you get by just sitting in stealth in the middle of the enemy team. Unlike other assassins who have to go in and out of fights, Akali can just sit there in the middle of it and be very threatening. Your opponents have to respect you, which gives your teammates the time to catch up and reinforce your play, or to kill other targets. It sounds silly, but just sitting there in stealth menacingly is honestly one of the best ways that higher elo Akalis contribute to team fights. And of course, once you see an opportunity, you come out and annihilate someone. Alright guys, let's finish things off with a quick starter build. These are the runes you'll be running most of the time. Akali makes very, very good use of Conqueror, as she does a lot of sustained damage with her kit, on top of having good burst. This is rather rare, but if you're against a lot of squishy targets, you could go and electrocute Page. But if you never want to think about your rune selection, then always go the Conqueror route. As for your items, your core build will generally be Proto Belt into Shadow Flame. This will give you a ton of penetration and health, so you can go in and delete squishy targets. Proto Belt is also great for letting you get in range to use your R, so it's usually the default mythic item that Akali will go most patches. Then just round out your build with some core AP items, and you're good to go. Alright guys, before we wrap this up, let's tell you a little more about skill cap. So, we offer a 5 division rank up guarantee, and think that's a pretty crazy thing to offer. It's like a gym membership guaranteeing you'll get ripped. Your local gym would go bust if they offered that, right? Not us. We've offered this for years because our service really does work. It works so well, in fact, that we're able to produce by far the largest catalog of premium league guides on the internet. We add over 20 videos a week. With over 1,600 guides curated into over 100 courses, no one can compare. We've also sent challenger players into ELO Hell 714 times and counting, where they commentate how to carry live. They also respond to all questions asked. Sign up today for as little as $6.99 a month if you are serious about improving. Alright guys, that is absolutely everything you need to know to get started playing Akali and having instant success on her. Good luck and catch you next time.